So, you know, every once in a while, I got to talk about Rand Paul. I don't know. Great disappointment up there in D.C. What can I say? Here's my thing about Rand Paul. He does things like he comes out and he says real hawkish stuff about Ukraine. Boy, if I was the president, not like he's running for office or anything, not like he's uh, ever in the habit of getting ahead of himself or anything like that, but just, you know, hypothetically, if it was me, I wouldn't let Putin get away with it. But then his argument is, we ought to just back off and do nothing about it. And and there's a couple of sort of hawkish things. You know, he says, we ought to get the Europeans to pay to put the missile defense system back in Poland, the one that Obama called off. Well, that's horrible. What are you talking about? But then again, he sort of doesn't really mean it, right? If he's saying the Europeans should have to pay for it, it's a it's a fake kind of, you know, faint anyway. And the point being, he's always trying to split the difference between everything, right? He's always trying to to not be a purist while sort of kind of being good on most stuff or something. But here's my thing. I think that instead of being everything to everyone, he's uh, going to just end up being nothing to nobody. And the conservatives and the Republican Party establishment certainly will have, always have way too much against him. And then the people like me can't be made to love them. The libertarians out here are just shaking our heads. You look at the laundry list of stuff that this guy has gotten wrong, and it's pretty big stuff. I mean, he just wrote a thing the other day condemning the reduction of production of Tomahawk missiles. Don't cut Tomahawk missiles. That's something that we need to keep doing. I mean, I don't know if they make them in Kentucky or what it is. You know, I guess... They wouldn't have to be in Kentucky to have contributed to him. I don't know if con- if contributions have anything to it. Maybe he's just friends with a guy who convinced him that tomahawks are a great way, like drones, to fight war on the cheap without invasions. And so maybe he really believes that's the right thing to do, or I don't know what the explanation is, but I know his dad wouldn't have written a thing like that. Condemning any kind of cut from the Pentagon for something like that, you know? Is you know, I don't know. And then, here's the thing about it, too. I know he wants to be president. And I think that if he was president, it would be a hell of a lot better than if Hillary was president in most ways. On the other hand, I don't think I could count on him to be good on really anything. It's always still hit or miss. It's always calculated according to his own gain rather than calculated as to really what's right. And so, how could anybody believe in him? And the reason that it really makes me upset is because if he just went up there and acted like his father, he would be the greatest senator of all time. Can you imagine a young, eloquent Ron Paul in the Senate with a six-year term minimum? Can you imagine that? A heroic, brave, uncompromising truth teller who instead of throwing his old man under the bus every chance he got, instead said, let me tell you something about what my father thinks about this. He's the one who said that you better not do this or that's going to happen. And now look at you trying to blame it on him. You're the one has got it all messed up. And if he did that, he'd be fighting fire with fire every day and he'd be great at it. Instead, everything is kind of let's have something argument, this and that. I'll vote for some Iran sanctions, but not other Iran sanctions. I'll, I'll support war in Afghanistan, but at the same time, I'll say we need to rethink and debate whether we should be in Afghanistan. And, you know, if you wanted to close Guantanamo, keeping it open isn't my first issue, but I'll be damned if you're going to see me actually try to close it. And, you know, all of this stuff. It just makes me sad to think what could be. What if Rand Paul, you know, everybody got excited. What was his biggest day? His biggest day was on the drone issue. Obama, you must declare that you swear you're never going to use a drone to assassinate a declared enemy combatant or whatever you call them in this country. Actually, he didn't say that. He said American citizens. I guess if it was Almari 
and he was alone at the community college library, maybe that would still be a fair game. But anyway, what people thought they heard was Rand is against federal lethal drones in all cases. And they loved it. And people started tweeting, stand with Rand. And hey, that son of Ron Paul, he's up there and he's saying that there ought to be a law or, or he wants to uh, uh, swear from the president that they'll never use drones to murder Americans. So, yeah. And even if people didn't realize that that actually could be an issue and it could. They thought, I'm for that. And so what, what was his big day? His big day was the day he acted most like his father. The day he got up there and said, hey, listen, power, back off, man. And people rallied to that. That's why people love Ron. And you know what? Ron is bad on, you know, the southern border, and he's bad on a couple of things. And and I've heard people complain, although it never bothered me, honestly. But I've heard people complain like it really bothers them, his voice, and the way he kind of stammers and is not so eloquent all the time or whatever. But he always was out there telling the truth. And so I'm not the only one who never minded about it. In fact, if anything, his stammering just makes him more every man. He's really just your country doctor up there trying to do the right thing, man. He really is, right? He's not there, the big square-jawed alpha male trying to make his money and be a powerful guy in the community and and wield his authority around and do favors and and uh, and ask for them and all these things. He really wasn't about that. He really was up there just trying to teach people about the boom and the bust cycle and why they ought to stop bombing people all the time, you know? And people could tell that, like, whatever this guy is, he's not lying to me. Whatever this guy is, he's honest. And actually, I can tell he actually cares. He says things like, listen, I know you want anyone to be able to go to college if if they want a higher education and to go far in life. We all want that. But I'm sorry that, in fact, your government program has just driven up the cost of education so high that people must become dependent on the federal government for these massive debts just to go to college, no matter who they are. And it's backfired. It ain't right. And that's the truth. And so I'm sorry if that rubs you the wrong way at first, but if you think about it, you'll know I'm right. And and it's true, and he's right, and everybody knows he's right. And even that lady who taunted uh, the, the pro-Obama lady, on uh, MSNBC, who did her letter to Snowden saying he was a coward for not coming home and going to prison for the rest of his life, where he could, you know, sit in the supermax next to Ted Kaczynski. She had to admit, you know, Ron Paul's right about that. I'm an educator at a university. And when the new rules come in saying how much for, uh, uh, you know, uh, education aid they're willing to pay, we raise our price to meet that. Simple as that. Of course we charge them the maximum. What are we going to do? Not charge them the maximum? And so there she had to admit this is a total left-wing, liberal, Obama-loving, central planning lady. And she couldn't, for the life of her, understand the economics of it. But when Ron Paul said that, she's just like, hey, personal experience, you're damn right. That's exactly how it works. And anyway, so... This is why people love Ron Paul. People love Ron Paul. I mean, my first opportunity someday when I'm rich and I can afford to waste 50 bucks or whatever, I want to get one of those giant, uh, you know, printouts of a portrait of him or like the photograph kind of thing and frame it and put him over my fireplace like people used to do with FDR back in the old days and whatever like that. That's what he is to me, man. He's great. Ron Paul's a great man. And the reason isn't because he got so many laws repealed. The reason is because he told the truth, no matter what, about power and why it was wrong and what it was up to. And, of course, when we're talking about Rand, the reason for the disappointment is we know that he knows all of these arguments at least as good as his father. He's heard it all. He knows what's right. And so he'll stake out a great opinion on this or that. He's suing over the NSA on the Fourth Amendment grounds. Okay, so so there you go. He voted against foreign aid to Ukraine in the middle of all this, you know, tough talk about it. He knows what the right thing is. But if you just be brave, be brave. Whenever you stand up to John McCain on anything, we all like you more. And I mean all, not libertarians. Everybody likes it when you fight with John McCain. You don't have to give in to him. In fact, you ought to deliberately do everything you can to filibuster Iran's sanctions just so you can get in a fight with him over it. 
you ought to put the most controversial stuff front and center so that you can fight about it, so that you can win. Because guess what? As everybody knows, the bipartisan consensus is horrible and wrong on almost everything. So fight about it and win. And you could be the greatest senator ever, even if they never let you become president. Even if they never let you be a senator again after this. Instead, all this compromise. The other thing about Ron Paul is that he is still Ron Paul's son. I got in a big old argument with Justin Romano about this. Uh, you may know if you read Justin at antiwar.com. Uh, he was very anti Rand Paul for a long time there. And then he had a complete about face. It was the don't drone me, bro. It was that that changed him. When Rand Paul did the drone filibuster, he won over Justin. And uh, I got in a big argument with Justin Romano when I was in uh, Washington, D.C. at that um, conference on Israel, the National Summit on Reassessing America's so called special relationship with Israel. And. Um, he was saying that, you know, Trotsky said, we can't have a broad popular front because the bourgeoisie are terrible, and so we don't want to ally with them. And Stalin said, hell yeah, we can ally with them, and he won. And I don't know exactly which context he's talking about, but eventually, you know, we all know that Ice Pick, uh, Ice Pick uh, Leon died in Mexico, and Stalin got to rule a third of the world for a while. And uh, that was the difference between them was that Stalin was willing to compromise on who he, he was willing to ally with in order to win. And, of course, he turned around and killed them all, which, I, you know, we don't have to follow that example. Um, but Justin's point was that we need a popular front, that this is an emergency. And so it doesn't matter if Rand Paul is a quarter of the man his father is. Who cares about that, dude? He's still going to be better on the Bill of Rights than the rest of them, and he's going to be better on the Empire than the rest of them, even if it's only what you consider marginally still worth supporting. Now, my attitude about that is I can't really argue about all of it except the worth supporting part. Because for me to support him would mean what? I don't know. I'm not going to vote for him. Uh, if anything, I think my criticism of him, probably he doesn't ever hear about what I got to say or anything. But if it helps, you know, in the broader libertarian movement that a lot of people are kind of fed up with him for not being libertarian enough. Um, I hate to say it, but maybe that'll help fortify his support on the right. But it ought to help push him to move toward libertarian positions to be better on things, too. For him to recognize that we might worship your old man, but still. It's like uh, Cat Williams said about Hillary Clinton. Yeah, we liked Bill, but lady, we don't even know you. You don't get to come in here and pretend like all black people are going to vote for you. Especially if you're running against a black guy, <laughs> dummy. You know, what are you talking about, dude? You don't own our vote, you arrogant, you know... Uh, power monger uh and i think Rand knows that there are a lot of uh, libertarians who are pretty disaffected but i think we got to keep that up in order for him to be the best uh, senator and or president he could be if he even does have a shot at it which i don't think he really does that's why i really emphasize what a great senator he could be compared to the mediocre senator failed presidential candidate that I think he'll end up being. And Justin pointed out that Ron used to be pretty right wing on some things and uh and he's gotten better and better over the years, so I wish Rand would hurry the hell up. Rand ought to be starting off where at you know at Ron's best. Uh you know, rather than this giant, you know, statist reset. But as far as supporting his presidential ambitions or whatever, I can't think of a politician I've ever heard of I'd prefer to get the nomination of the presidency. But then, yeah, I'm not really sure. To me, it's sort of a moot thing because I don't really think there should be a presidency at all. I hate even supporting the presidency at all. And I would hate to see... Rand Paul get up there and call it libertarianism as he, you know, implements uh, Mitch McConnell foreign policy, for example, or a domestic one on a lot of things, too. That's not libertarianism, conservatism. Uh, and how committed is he to anything other than his own ambition? I just don't know. I mean, here's a guy who's been premature ejaculating all over the place about, oh, I would be honored to be Mitt Romney's running mate. <laughs> like, dude... Mitt Romney's not going to make you his vice presidential running mate. Be cool. Chill out. 
And then, really, you'd be honored? You're just dying to step on your own father's head for the slightest chance to get Paul Ryan's losing spot on the Romney ticket? When he couldn't possibly beat Obama in 2012. Don't be so ambitious all the time.